Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English. What if I told you that there were eight structural devices that will come up in your exam no matter what happens? And I'm willing to bet that if they don't come up in your exams, I will not release any YouTube videos from that day forth. I'm done. I will leave forever. Why do I say that, guys? Because in this video today, we are tackling the awkward question. That's why I call it. It's the structure question. And the question is always the same. The question is how does the writer use structure to interest the reader? I'm going to try to give you everything you need for this particular question. We're going to go over the eight structural devices that come up every single year. Then I will give you eight more structural devices that you can hopefully keep in your back pocket. Then we'll go over an answer. We'll plan a response. We'll write a response. We will look at model answers. And hopefully, guys, by the end of the video, this awkward question will no longer remain awkward and you will hopefully bag eight out of eight in your exam. Now, guys, a reminder, if you want to follow me uh, while I do the uh, planning and the writing in the description box, I'll put a link for the insert and the question paper that I am using. So feel free, guys, to click on the link and work alongside me. All right, guys, paper one, question number three. Let's begin. It says you now need to think about the whole of source A. Now, no longer is this question looking at paragraphs. No longer is it looking at certain extracts. Now we're looking at the entirety of source A. And when we do this question, guys, we're going to plan it live the way I want you to work in the exam. When we looked at the first question, guys, when we looked at question number one, you all saw how we took our answers off the extract and then we wrote our response. When we looked at question number two, we didn't even bother going back to the extract. We simply read the paragraph, found our two paragraphs and wrote our response. That's exactly what I would like you guys to do in the exam. Now, this question is looking at the whole source. So what does that mean? When we begin to plan it, we're going to go back to the source. We're going to go back to what the writer sorry what the examiners have given us now let's read the question the question says how has the writer structured the text to interest you as a reader first things first i want to speak about the word interest i want to speak about the word interest the word interest puts a lot of students off oh my god what does that mean what does it mean by interest guys never in the history of the world maybe as an exception but pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time, writers do not publish texts for them to be boring. Every text, guys, every book, 99.9% .9 of the time has been written to be interesting because writers want to make money. People are not going to buy boring stuff. Why do I say that? Finding how this text is interesting shouldn't be hard because pretty much every paragraph, every line the writer is trying to make it interesting. They are never going to try to make it boring. That's the first part cleared up. The whole thing is supposed to be interesting. But what's the catch? The catch is, how does the writer use that to make it interesting? How does the writer use structure to make it interesting? And this is where things get tricky for two reasons. Number one, a lot of students don't know what structural devices are. And number two, a lot of students don't know how to pick structural devices. So the first thing that we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go over structural devices. And I'm going to break this down into two sections. The two sections, guys, are going to be called. Let's break it down, guys. The two sections, guys, are going to be called as follows. Section number one, we're going to call it bulletproof. These eight structural devices that I'm going to put in this section, guys, they will make you bulletproof. Why do I say that? They will make you bulletproof, guys, because I guarantee you that no matter what happens, they will come up in your exam. I don't want anyone, guys, messaging me after the exam saying, ah, oh, sir, you know what? Question number three, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't find language devices. Uh-uh, guys, that is not allowed. Every single one of us, is coming out of the exam on June the 5th, finding structural devices for this question. Because as a minimum, I'm gonna give you eight devices that are bulletproof, untouchable, because they're gonna come up. You're gonna walk in the exam guy like you're wearing a bulletproof vest. 
AQA is gonna try to fire shots, but it is not gonna work because these eight are going to make sure that we at least find these in our answer. So what are the eight that I say are bulletproof structural devices? Very simple guys. Number one, long sentence. Number two, short sentence. Number three, long paragraph. Number four, short paragraph. Number five, zooming in. Number six, zooming out. Number seven, shift in focus. And number nine, new. Now let me talk you guys through these eight first. These eight devices, especially these four, long sentence, short sentence, long paragraph, short paragraph. I have a written longest sentence, shortest sentence. Just look for a long sentence or look for a long paragraph. But then you have the other four, which are really good to talk about. Zooming in, zooming out, shift in focus and new. Zooming in guys, picture a camera phone, zooming into something and focusing on it in detail. Why do writers do this? They do this to create importance. And then you might zoom out and talk about the setting. That is zooming out. Now normally when you zoom in and you zoom out, at that moment, you do a shift in focus because you might go from talking about the table over there to the weather outside. That's the shift in focus. And at the same time, you zoomed out. Then new. There will always be something new in the extract. Whether it's a new character, a new setting, new time, there will always be something new that you can discuss. Now, these eight guys, these eight are our backup, our bulletproof structural devices. You can easily find them and they are in every single extract. Now, those eight are there should we need them. Now guys, let's look for eight other structural devices that I'm gonna put in the column titled stretch. Now, these eight that I'm gonna give you, I feel as though it is easier talking about the effect of these. Now, what are these eight? Number one, guys, let's begin with dialogue. Number two, let's look at a list. Number three, let's look at a flashback. Number four, let's go for foreshadowing. Number five, guys, let's go for structure. Number seven, let's go for repetition. And number eight, guys, let's go for juxtaposition. And let's talk about these in detail. So guys, dialogue. Dialogue is when there is talking in your extract. John said hello, Jane said hi. That is dialogue in your extract. And it's a very easy structural device to spot because you can literally see it on the page because the writer will use speech marks. Then guys, we have a list. And the list is four or more. Anything less than four, that will be a rule of three. But a list, guys, is four or more. Then, guys, we have a flashback. A flashback is when the writer refers to past events. Five years ago, three years ago, one year ago, last month. And foreshadowing is when the writer gives clues about events that may happen in the future. Then we have a cyclical structure. And a lot of the extracts that are used by the exam boards have a cyclical structure. This is when the opening and the ending of the extract are similar. Not the same, but similar. This could be the mood or the tone or the feeling of the character that remains the same. Then guys, we have our two controversial ones. Is repetition a language device? Is it a structural device? Is juxtaposition a language device? Is it a structural device? It all depends. Guys, it all depends. What does it depend upon? It depends on your effect. I'll give you an example. Let's take juxtaposition. If we're looking at juxtaposition across one line, then we're probably going to analyze the language and we're going to give it a language analysis. But if we're comparing the character in paragraph one to how the character has changed in paragraph five, this is, this is juxtaposition as a structural device because we're talking about him or her changing over time. For example, Harry Potter. Harry Potter in the first book and the last book. We're not talking about language, but we're talking about how as the books developed, 
Harry as a character changed, he transformed. And the same goes for repetition. If we're looking at repetition, maybe on one line, and we're talking about the effect of the word stop, stop, stop being repeated. This is a language analysis. This is a language effect. But if we're talking about how in paragraph one and in paragraph three and in paragraph four, the writer repeats this throughout the extract, this is a structural analysis. So guys, it all depends what we're doing with these techniques. It all depends on the effect. But there are more. There are more than these 16 devices. But these are the 16 that I think are plenty for you to use in your exam. Eight bulletproof devices. Eight stretch devices. Mix and match and use them in your response. And this leads me on to the structure of our writing. You will know, guys, that the structure for this question is very similar to question number two. This question, guys, we have 10 minutes in our exam. And in a 10 minute question, we are looking to write two pretzel paragraphs. So how are we gonna actually manifest this in our response? Imagine guys, we're doing pretzel, P, R, T, E, Z, E, and L. The first thing that I must really advise you guys for this question is when it comes to our reference, when it comes to your quote, do not make life difficult. Guys, do not make life difficult. What do I mean by that? When it came to English language, uh, paper one, question two, we were quoting actual quotes, actual words, right? So we were actually writing down the quote word for word. When it comes to structure, here's my advice. If possible, don't limit yourself to three to four words. Say from lines one to line three, from lines one to line four, from line 10 to line 14. Don't go crazy. Don't start quoting massive chunks and start saying from line one to line 30. Keep it at about five, six maximum. I always say guys, three lines is enough. Line one to three, line three to six, line five to eight. That's a good amount to quote. Now, why are we quoting lines and not writing actual words? Reason being, guys, if we're just quoting small chunks, so three words, four words, remember, we are looking to find two structural devices in one reference. Imagine you're doing a long sentence and foreshadowing, or you're doing juxtaposition, or you're doing uh, repetition. You need lines for this to exist. If the writer repeats something, on line one and then line two and then line three. We're not gonna sit there and copy out all three lines. Nobody has time for that. That is why in the mark scheme, it talks about judicious referencing, not quoting. Meaning we can refer to lines one to line three. And then we be specific. So if you're talking about repetition, you might say, from lines one to line three, the writer repeats so-and-so on line one and at the end of line three but we're not gonna quote all three lines. We're gonna be sitting there wasting our time. We got 10 minutes to write two paragraphs. We can't be spending three, four minutes just copying down quotes. That's the first rule. Number two, the more you're quoting, the more chance you have to find two structural devices in those lines. That's the first rule. Don't put yourself in a corner by quoting too less. Second rule, guys, when it comes to your technique, Guys, when it comes to your technique, maybe try to pick one device from here. And when it comes to your zooming in, maybe try to pick one device from here. That way you got a nice variety. You've got a device that may be a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of a challenge and has a better effect. And then your backup is one of these for your zooming in. Now, you don't have to do that. That's just a recommendation that, make, that may make your life easier. You can just take two of these, put one there, one there, if you really wanted to. Or you can take two of these and put one there and one there. I remember, and this is a very important point. In paper one, question number two, there have been multiple model answers where students are getting eight out of eight just by talking, just by talking about verbs. What does that mean? It doesn't matter what you pick it matters what you do with it. 
Don't get lost in trying to be so clever that you're picking out juxtaposition and foreshadowing and your effect is like one line long. Focus more on picking stuff that you can talk about. This is an exam. This is your one chance to prove to the examiner what you know. Don't get lost, guys, in picking overcomplicated stuff that you can't talk about. If you're happy with the effect and you think you're confident in explaining it, yeah, pick that device. But don't pick it just because you've heard that juxtaposition is a fancy Nancy structural device. Pick what you are comfortable with. And if that means you do two paragraphs where you're talking about zooming in, zooming out, shift in focus and a long sentence, then so be it. Because you have as much of a chance of getting eight out of eight as someone who picks four from here. Because what is your battle between? Your battle is between your effects. You're all picking out structural devices. It just depends what you do with them. And this leads me on to the mark scheme. This is the mark scheme, guys, for this question. Eight marks, how do we get eight out of eight? Number one, we must pick a range of judicious examples. This is talking about our reference. This is talking about our reference, guys. Then we have to make sophisticated use of subject terminology. Essentially, guys, this is talking about our methods. Flashback, foreshadowing, and so on, because these are words that we only use in English. And then we have the most important part, guys. It is asking us to analyze the effect of the structural feature, the structural devices. That is why, guys, when it comes to the pretzel paragraph, the same rules apply as they applied in language. What are we marked upon for this question? We are marked upon our quote. We are marked upon our technique, our effect, our zoom, and our effect. The same way we were in paper one, question number two. So guys, let's recap before we begin planning our response. This question is looking at how does the writing structure to interest the reader? Here are, here are 16 devices that you can use. For this question, we're writing two pretzel paragraphs, spending 10 minutes, five minutes per paragraph. Now, what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna show you how you actually plan in an exam. We've gone back to source A, and now we're gonna pick our response. The first thing that we're gonna choose, guys, is over here where it says, in those days, there were heroes, there were dragons and dinosaurs, space adventures and soldiers of fortune and giant apes. This is going to be our first quote, and this is our, so lines 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So lines 12 to 14, this will count as our reference. Remember guys, we are planning pretzel paragraphs. So this is what you do live on your sheet. I've got my reference. What's my first technique here? The technique that I'm gonna use here guys is a list. <clears throat> that is going to be the technique that I will use for this particular um, sentence. And for my zooming in, I'm going to talk about how the writer here also uses a long sentence. And that is what I shall zoom into. And what shall I show? How does the writer create interest in this part, guys? The writer creates interest by building up the book's of the past. What do I mean by that, guys? I'm saying that the writer creates interest by really spending time emphasizing how amazing the books used to be. It's as though it was a part of history that we will never get back. And the writer does this through our list and through our long sentence. Paragraph one, planned. Now let's move on to paragraph number two. Let's go down a little bit and let's move on to paragraph number two. Let's go for this part over here. Uh, Mr. Fisher began, experienced a very strange sensation. It began as a tightening in his diaphragm as if a long unused muscle had been brought into action. So, for paragraph, for paragraph number two, guys, my reference is going to be lines 34 to line 35. That will be my reference. And my structural device here is, guys, going to be juxtaposition. Guys, it's going to be juxtaposition. And I'm going to talk about how this part of the extract pretty much juxtaposes everything before. 
all of this part, Mr. Fisher is a dull, dead character. But now, a very strange sensation. Things are about to change. And I'm going to zoom in to the zooming in about how the writer zooms in to his diaphragm. His breathing is changing. He's becoming excited. And my point here, guys, is the writer creates interest by making the events of the extract unusual. It goes against what is happening. And that is my point. That is my reference. That is my technique. And that is my zoom done. And as you can see, guys, there I have two paragraphs. For both of my... For both of my answers, I've got one technique that's from the bulletproof side. I've got long sentence and zooming in. And I've got one technique, juxtaposition and list, which is from the stretch side. I didn't plan that. It just happened by accident. But it works really well for me. And there you have it, guys. Two paragraphs done. That's it. Two person paragraphs planned. Takes you a couple of minutes in your exam. And, that, and this is how you plan live on your sheet. So there I planned question number one and when we did question number two, I planned it right there and then question number three guys, we come back and we plan it right back onto our sheet. And that is how you plan question number two. Before I write up a response, I just want you guys to see a model answer guys. Again, this was published by AQA and they gave this response seven out of eight. They don't really publish, guys, 8 out of 8 responses. Hence why a lot of the responses that I show you guys are 7. As you can see, guys, as a very simple thing, I'm not going to read it out for you guys. You can read it in your own time. But as you can see, two paragraphs is enough. Um, it got 7 out of 8. And essentially, guys, this student has two techniques per paragraph. And that is what they analyze. Okay, now my turn. Let me write out a paragraph just so you guys can see how you piece it together. After planning two paragraphs, you then begin to write them up. Now behind me on the board, I I've written out one paragraph for you guys. I just wrote out a basic outline just so you can see how you bring the plan to life. In source say, the writer creates interest by building up the aura of the books from the past. That's my point. This can be seen from lines 12 to 14. I refer to the lines where the writer uses a list of six qualities i was specific by naming how long the list was now as an important point this idea of referencing lines only do it for this question not for question number two uh, of the book to illustrate the plethora of positive features about these books furthermore making it a list of six the writer highlights how these books have something for everyone they were not just limited to one or two qualities in fact there were six furthermore and then i zoom in uh, this is further highlighted through the long sentence which mimics the idea that the goodness of the books, like the sentence, is never ending and goes on and on and on. And then you would end the paragraph by saying, therefore, as you can see, the writer highlights or the writer creates interest by highlighting the aura or the impeccable aura of the books from the past. Guys, this is just a basic outline of a paragraph. I want to end this video, guys, by giving you guys one last bit of advice. And that is as follows. Don't let the exam defeat you just because it's a structure question. Structure, guys, is the boogeyman that people get scared of. Oh my God, what are structural devices? I can't find them. Remember, guys, remember, remember, remember. These eight are 100% coming up in your exam on Monday. 100%. You cannot write an extract without these eight. So if all else fails, write two paragraphs talking about these. But you can also look for these as a stretch to talk about a dialogue list, flashback and foreshadowing. The best paragraphs are the ones, in my opinion, that have one of these and have one of these. That way we're not wasting time looking for extra structural features and we are quite secure before we go in the exam with what we are going to pick out. Now, this question, guys, you can argue is easier than the language question. Because in the language question, you can't really rehearse for what language devices may come up. Yes, hyperbole is a strong one. Simile is a strong one. But the others, you don't really know. 
you're walking into paper one, question three, with at least eight structural devices in your back pocket that you know will 100% come up. Now guys, if you are revising, which you should be between now and Monday, my advice would be plan a few questions, write a few responses, and see how you get on. All right, guys, we have question four left and we have question five. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., we will go over question number four. As always, it's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.